Welcome back to Build a Neuro Ninja. So we're in mind management and we're thinking about choosing growth. And this video was made just ahead of Children's Mental Health Week in 2022. And it's all about the theme of choosing growth and how we develop and change ourselves throughout our lives, working with our brain rather than getting into a fight with it. And this is skill five of being a neuro ninja. We're living in a body and a brain that changes on the basis of what we use it for. We are not fragile. Obviously, we're precious and we need to look after ourselves, but we're not fragile like a glass is fragile. We're anti-fragile. What I mean by that is if you use your body and brain in particular ways to improve and develop it, it will get stronger. And the best example of that is exercise. If you exercise regularly and say develop your core strength by doing core strength exercises, you strengthen those muscles. And that's what we mean by anti-fragile. We can choose growth. The only constant in our lives is change. And there are two flavors of change, which we'll explore shortly. And in this video, it's all about how we can make change happen in our lives in a reliable and predictable way, as well as manage the other changes that happen to us the things that we can't control. We need to understand that our brain often gets conflicted about change because there are parts of it that love change and embrace it, love to learn new things and is curious about the world. And there are other parts of it um, that just want it not to happen. They want us to keep away from change. It, it wants to keep us safe. And that's much older parts of the brain. So we've got the new brain, this yellow bit, the neocortex, that loves to go out into the world and do new stuff and is curious and loves to learn and read and travel. And then there's the older brain associated with the amygdala, the hypothalamus in the subcortical areas, the old brain that just basically is response to new stuff is, no, no thanks, I don't fancy that. So we've got this conflict. Different circuits have different opinions about things that are going on in the world. So we end up in a conflict about change. And you'll recognise that experience, won't you? That new experience, that new opportunity to go somewhere new with someone new. You're like, yep, yeah, that's quite interesting. I'm quite excited, but actually I'm a bit nervous about it as well. That is the argument that happens across the brain. So emotional safety circuits want to keep us safe and like to avoid struggle. And learning circuits want to go and do new things, improve and grow. Our brain is effectively like a noisy parliament. And when change comes along, it causes different circuits to respond in different ways. So there's this argument going on across the brain. And when we face change, that can become quite a noisy parliament of brain cells arguing with each other. We can dither. We're not quite sure what to do and how to bring change about. So how can we choose to change how can we choose growth reliably, improve a skill, an attitude, or do something new? We need to think about change differently, and we need to think about our attitude to change. We need to understand that we're much more complicated than we think we are. We're changing every single day. We are a process, not just one unchanging thing. Our brain thinks we're an unchanging thing, but actually we're constantly changing. We are the sum total of our genes plus the experiences we've had in the environment. That's the experiences that have happened to our body, the experiences that have happened emotionally and socially to us. Um, and that is us. And But every experience we have changes us slightly. We're moving through time in a body and a brain that generates a mind um, at the speed of one second per second. We're living in a biological time machine that's taking us into the future. And as it's experiencing the world, it is changing. When you learn something, just a new fact in a lesson, your brain is changing. Literally, genes are being turned on and off in neurons. So you are constantly changing. You are not the same thing every day. And yet you think you are. Brains can be blind to change. Have a look at this video and you can see that process in action. It's shocking. You are about to take part in a quick experiment. Take a look at this. Okay, now 
Did you happen to notice anything odd? Watch again. See any changes? Don't worry if you didn't see that it's two different men. That means your brain is doing exactly what it should be. You are about... Amazing. Two different men and we didn't spot the change. Our mind is blind to the changes that occur around us every day because those changes are small. What we need to understand when we're approaching change is that change is inevitable. Change happens. There are two different flavours of change. There's accidental, non-directed change and deliberate, directed change. So if we're changing all of the time, we should be able to marshal the forces of change to move ourselves forward in a positive direction. We can amplify the speed and positive impact of that change by being deliberate and self-directed about small aspects of change. Or we can leave ourselves to the mercy of the random and tricky changes that life will throw at us anyway. We can develop a can't approach. So we should and have a birthright to seek and shape change for growth in our lives. Or we can wait for change to find us. Not changing is not an available option. That's really important to understand. So how can we build change into our lives? change we can make happen each and every day. Well, we need to be a neuro ninja about it. We need to choose growth. We need to think about our attitudes, our goals and our habits. And we're going to talk about that now. When it comes to change, like so many things in life, attitude is everything. So what kind of horse are you? Hey, what are you going on about horses, Andrew? Actually, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Now think of the water as the change and you as the horse. What kind of attitude do you have to change? Are you a curious seeker of change? You're interested in change and it's simply a matter of being helped to develop your and improve yourself. Are you very, very keen on change and already changing yourself in a self-directed way? So Curious is horse A, the curious, and if you're already engaged in lots of change in your life, you're horse D, the willing. And then there's the helpless, and we can all be helpless in some aspects of our lives with some subjects that we find difficult, for example. If um, we're helpless, we're finding it really hard to change. And then we could be stuck as well in a space of denial or finding life so tricky that we can't change. So think about yourself. Are you curious about change and actually interested in engaging in the change process for yourself. Are you already engaging in change? Are you willing um, to change already and can see spaces in your life where you've already made those changing? And that'll be lots of you. Equally, all of us at some point in our lives, for lots of complicated reasons, can become stuck. We can become the stuck attitude to change, the don't, won't, can't, we could be prickly, aggressive, unkind and unapproachable. Set up a shell, a protective shell to avoid any conversations around change. We can be in denial about the need to change. We could get lost because of the trickinesses of life. We could become untrusting, angry, damaged, alone as a result of trauma and difficulty. We can become down and depressed and anxious and have very negative self-esteem and don't believe that change is possible. We can become closed Life is so difficult and change needs to be avoided at all costs. And all of us, because of the difficult circumstances we might find ourselves in as life changes, can become strugglers with our health, um, complex situations in our life or our family circumstances that mean progress is intermittent and slow. Or we can become helpless. We can shirk our responsibilities. We can blame others or we can be such um, in a space of such self-loathing that any sort of change feels like criticism, so we don't engage in it. To help all of you, to help all of us, the way to support the stuck and the helpless is kindness, building trust, positive relationships, modelling, reaching out, being kind to the unkind. That's really important to do, to reach out and be supportive when people are struggling. It requires patience and time and openness, hope and empathy. 
it re requires the building of long-term relationships with people that are struggling, being open to them, providing them with a vision for the future and empathy. It's about offering hope that tomorrow can be different from today and showing people across the community that you care for them and that there is love in the world. So if we're going to change ourselves or others, we need to be aware of what kind of horse we're dealing with. What is our attitude to change currently? And any space that we're in can change. We can move ourselves. And changing ourselves, we need to become capable. We need to have the courage to embrace the uncertainty to step into growth because it can be scary. We need to notice areas that are ripe for change, things that will make a big difference. We need to make plans. We need to develop near, mid and far goals to build progress. We need to engage and do. We need to witness our progress and tweak it as we go along. And we need to evolve and work out the next steps and repeat. So in terms of those goals, mid goals, near goals and far goals. Near goals are what you're doing right now. Mid goals is what you think it's going to look like in a month. Far goals is what you'd like it to be like in six months. We need to be determined, realistic and be smart in our goals. So I would suggest that you think about a change to your well-being regime, improving sleep, building exercise, sorting out a balanced and healthy diet, adding mindfulness to your daily routine, listening to more music, spending time with friends and family, deliberate work, improve a skill at school. It might be in a subject, a particular area you're struggling with, and then choose a deliberate challenge, choose growth, and be really clear about what those goals are. And there's lots of examples on the hub that you can access that explains that. So to change, be clear about your near goals. Choose one thing you want to change about your schoolwork. Choose one thing you want to improve about your well-being. Choose one challenge or personal growth goal and use small steps to make those things happen. Steps like Noah. Noah was suffering from anxiety going into school. He learned about his brain's response to anxiety and then designed some calm down strategies. And now he's taken up two new sports and is in school every day. Um, it's so important in, in, in his exam year. It's fantastic and we're really proud of you, Noah. That is a Neuro Ninja shout out to Noah. We have changed that child's name to protect their identity. Or Matilda, with these study habits, Matilda says, I feel like I've hacked my GCSEs. I mean, honestly, learning little bits for eight months now, there's not a question in the mocks that I didn't feel I could have a go at answering. A shout out to Matilda. Again, we've changed that student's name to protect their identity. Since starting the study habit every day at the same time, I've started to fight back against procrastination. It's brilliant and that is fantastic celebration. Well done, Joe. Again, we've changed that student's name. And finally, I was really, really struggling to sleep and then I tried the Build Great Sleep Net. I'm working on small changes each week. I'm getting so much more sleep and feel so much better. And that was an A-level student, um, Tamsin, Tams, that we were supporting. Again, we've changed that student's name. And finally, we'd love to say well done to all of you from both of us, Andrew and Darren, that do the one-to-one -one coaching. We're always inspired by all of you. A huge shout out to all the Neuro Ninjas we support every week. You inspire us every time we talk to you. You're courageous, thoughtful, determined, honest, kind and amazing. Thank you. Be kind to yourself. You'll never speak to anyone more than you speak to yourself in your head every day. Be kind to yourself. Change takes courage. Courage is not some macho shoutiness. It's actually about that quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'll give it another go. If you are willing to change, no one can stop you. If you're not willing to change, no one can help you. That's not true. We can help you. We believe in you. Do you believe in yourself? So how are you going to grow next? You can change your mind. You can change your brain. You can change your world. What are you waiting for?